In this tutorial, I'd like to talk a little bit about the Valent Glare Correction tool. Now, Valent Glare Correction is a tool that's found both in HDR Expose 3 and 32 Float version 3. The Valent Glare panel is located here below the navigator window. Now, before I show you how to use the tool, I want to explain a little bit about what Valent Glare actually is. Valent Glare is an artifact that comes at time of capture. It's caused by internal reflections between lens elements. The Valent Glare tool compensates for this by restoring the original shadow contrast. You can also use the Valent Glare tool to help you recover from atmospheric haze in landscape shots. Now, if you tried to use the Valent Glare tool in our previous products in version 2 or earlier, you'll be happy to know that we've completely re-engineered this feature. Previously, you had to go through a complex mode change which required you to work on an untone mapped image. With HDR Expose 3 and 32 Float version 3, we've changed that so now you can work on the same tone map view of the image that you have after the merge process. This makes it much easier and convenient to work with. Still, from a workflow perspective though, this is probably one of the first changes that you'll want to make to an image. And that's why these controls are located at the top of the operations panel. When I look at this image on my screen, I see a little bit of a haze and a loss of shadow contrast. Also, the colors look a little muddy. Now, I'm not sure how much of this is coming across on the YouTube display of this tutorial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add veiling glare to this image by moving my slider in the plus direction. When I do that, it'll be very clear what we're working with. Let me just move it up here to a value of 35. Here you can see the full effect. It looks like you're shooting through a very dirty lens with a lot of fingerprints. Now as I move the slider in the negative direction, we'll go back to the zero point. This is the default setting. And I'm going to go further down. I'll try a value of 10 first. And then I'll go to 20. And as I do that, you can see that this veil disappears. I'm going to zoom in on the grass now and you can see that the color is starting to return and that we have more contrast in this image. Now when I look at this image, I think this is a little too harsh. So I'm going to back it off a little down to a value of minus 10. If I have multiple images that were taken under similar lighting conditions with the same lens and camera, I can create a feature preset here by clicking on the little gear icon and say add preset and typing in a name. This will make it easy for me the next time to simply select this preset from the list and apply it. So I'm happy with the initial uh, veiling glare correction that I made to this image. Let's take a quick before and after look to see the effect that this had on my image. Turn the feature off here by clicking on the switch and you can see that veil come back. You can see that the image looks a lot crisper when I turn it back on. Again, on, off. On this image, the change is really subtle, but it does make a big difference in giving you a better starting point as you go through the rest of the processing of this image. Here's another image that's really struggling from veiling glare issues. Now, it's probably a combination of true veiling glare caused by internal lens reflections, as well as atmospheric haze here in the background. You can see that the color in the foreground is very muddy and the detail back in the mountains is almost completely lost. So let's adjust the veiling glare amount and see what a difference this makes. Take it up to minus 14, go a little further to minus 20, take it up to minus 30. You can see that the color and detail in the foreground is coming back. And I'm also starting to make out more contrast and detail back in the mountains. Now, as I adjust the base point further down to minus 3, you can see that it has the effect of brightening the image. If I take it up to 0, you can see that the image gets darker. If I double-click on it, it'll go back to the automatically calculated value. In this case, I'm going to take the base point up to maybe minus 2.5. Now, this is my starting point. I'm not done yet, but I've corrected the veiling glare issues. If I look at my histogram, I can see that there's a fair amount 
that I've overexposed. If I click on the highlight warnings, you can see this area in red that is beyond what can be displayed on the screen. So I'm going to go down to my tone mapping controls. In this case, I'm going to reduce the exposure of the image to bring back the highlights. Now the exposure shift doesn't change the shape of the histogram. It simply moves everything down the same amount. In this case, I've darkened it by one third of a stop. Now my foreground is dark. My clouds and the highlights are where I want them. So what I'm going to do now is just adjust the gamma slider up. So now I have the look that I want. The clouds are back, the detail has come back in the black background, and I have the foreground areas the way I want. When I look zoom in on here, I can see that the foliage has color again, that I have detail back here in the mountains, and that I really have everything that I want from this high dynamic range scene. Now that I'm done processing this image, I'm going to switch the Veil and Glare option on and off so you can see before and after the effect that this has on this image. So this is after, and this is before. It's a huge difference on this image. And that's how the Veil and Glare correction tool works in HDR Expose 3 and 32 Float version 3. Thanks for watching.